Hello there again. This is Lady Charlotte again of Lady Charlotte Arts. And today we're going to finish up that uh, video series on the Mishima. Mishima. Uh, it's pronounced in a good number of ways. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this underglaze. And this is a velvet underglaze. And it does real well. It doesn't... Uh, doesn't burn out in any way. We will be uh, firing this to an O5, an, excuse me, a cone 5 uh, temperature because it is a porcelain plate. So we need to fire it to the temperature that the plate goes to. And you can't quite see the underglaze. Here we go. There, you can see what kind it is there. But I'm going to bring it back over here for my purposes because you want to see the what I'm doing it to. So I'm going to take the on this real scruffy brush. You get these at Walmart. They're just really cheap and. You can get 10 or 12 for a dollar. And I use them because they've got a nice stiff plastic bristle in them that I can work this underglaze down into the carving in the places where I carved in. You know, I want the underglaze to be down in there really well. So I just kind of scrub a little around and Make sure that I have all the parts taken care of, all the lines, all the areas. Right now I'm just taking the underglaze out of the cap because when you shake it up, a lot of it goes into the cap. When you do it, then there you have the cap full of material. And so I'm taking that out. almost had enough to finish it. In fact, if I work with it, I may have. There may be enough of this little lid to do the whole thing. I'm going to go, I'm going back with the brush into all the areas that have any carving to them and I'm just scribbling away to make sure that all the parts that need to be underglazed will be underglazed. Sometimes when you do one of these pieces like this and you think you got them all then when you go to wipe back your glazes you see oh no that one didn't get filled in and then you have to go and do it again which is a bit of a bother. That's all of that for right now. I'm going to let that sit there for a few minutes. The underclays doesn't have to be completely dry, but we don't want it real wet and either. We kind of want it in between kind. And The reason that I choose the uh, velvet underglazes is they're they're good from the get-go, from from the lowest uh, cone temperatures up pretty much up. I, I have fired it in cone ten when I was uh, at the university, and uh, we fired re gas reduction kilns there, and uh, they all go to cone ten, and I had no no problems with the velvet underglazes there either. They, they, you put them there, they stayed there. And uh, Now you do have to be aware that they are a very matte finish. They're not going to have any gloss to them. They're just the color, whatever color they happen to be. 
And if you want a gloss finish, then you have to cover it with a clear gloss if you want the color to show through. Or a settle down gloss. Those settle down works real well. It's kind of a, a semi-transparent glaze. And you can see, meaning that you can see through it. And this is getting almost to the point where we can start wiping it down. It's getting kind of tacky. A couple of, couple of dry spots there. Blowing on it will not make it go faster either. And especially if you blow on it. I don't think you blowing on it would do it any good at all, do you? You could try, though. You try blowing, and we'll see. Did you blow? Oh, you must have blown, because this side over here is getting drier faster. Yeah, you must have blown, and it did a good job. It's all getting less runny now, so we're going to start wiping it down. And now, do you see here all the lines that we carved in? all been covered with the glaze. Now there's an area right there that had a, a spot in the, in the, uh, in the uh, wax where the wax did not cover completely and those little spots like that can sometimes pick up the glaze and hang on to them. Gender the glaze, but when you wipe them down, you can sometimes get some of them out. And if they don't come out wiping them down, then you can try scraping them out after you're done. take this down and I'm going to dump it in a bucket so we get a nice clean you probably got a quick shot of me in here too <laughs> anyway it lets you know what I look like just a silly old lady run this around a little bit more More and more of it's coming out now. I'm going to need to go back over this one right here. And that's where I made a change and tried to erase it out. And I didn't get this line quite the way it should be. That's one of my curly cues. And at first, I curlied it the wrong direction. And I had to try and redo that because I didn't want it going in the wrong direction.
and now you can see with when you've got the lines you can see what you really want and you see like that like it I was going in the wrong direction I'm going to make this come out right instead of in between not ready for that part yet now all the ways oh wait all the uh, wax has been removed from this part and when I go back in there I'm going to have to be careful because it take a sponge to sponge it off we don't want to have the uh, area be so wet that it will run the the, the uh, clay where the clay will run around uh, and cover up what we're doing we don't want to do that so that's why when I make these little additions that I've got to make here where I didn't get the line quite as deep or even get a line there but I'm going to wait for a bit before I try that until so this clay that I have here is underneath all this wax and when I wiped it down it wiped down for the uh, to get rid of the uh, underglaze but it also I can see to show you we also got this area right in here and this area in here these are all taking up moisture whenever I'm wiping that down and I probably can't see from my stupid hand being in the wrong way now maybe you can see and uh, do this backwards in this area here you can see the clay all the way same thing here now that's not a, a problem in, in and of itself we used to do it that way we did it with uh on pieces that had gotten almost bone dry a really gone past leather hard piece and you would sketch out your piece and, and with your stylus or whatever you were using and you would would sketch it and, and carve it out and then you'd put your uh, stuff on there and you'd wipe it away when it got dry and you'd wait till it got completely dry and then you'd wipe it away and that usually worked pretty good but this thing there is they need to be completely dry this is now you can see here it's got moisture on the bottom of it see here this it's, it's got some that's gone through and so it's got a lot of, of a lot of moisture in the clay and it may not like being wiped down again so I'm going to fill in the areas that I think need more filling Need something more black. Places where I made some 
design changes. Sometimes you, when you when you're drawing these things on the clay or on the wax, either one, when you're drawing you may think that you've gotten something done, but when it actually comes down to it, you haven't, you know, because you, you can't see it that well. Now I'm just putting things back down on here, and uh, go in in a, in a little bit and wipe it down. I'm going to let this dry all the way because we do have some bare clay there that. If it's not dried all the way, it'll just mix in it with it and smear it, and it'll be a gruesome mess, and we don't want to have that. So, for today, we are Fini, and uh, I will show you in my third episode of this, I will show you the results of the last brushing down, and also show you what we're going to do next to it. This little plate's going to take a lot of doing before it's finished. These plates go through, well, it's fixing to go through its first bisque firing. It will be fired to bisque. And then it will be fired to cone 5. And then it will be fired to cone 3. And then it will be fired to cone 1. And then it will be fired to cone 022. So it's going to go through a whole lot of processes and a whole lot of firings. And I hope that you will be here with me for those processes. I intend to uh, do a video for each one of them. And I hope that you've enjoyed this enough that you'll come back and follow this little plate all the way through to his finished product. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you in the next episode. Good afternoon.